Modern Australia is a nation shaped by migration. Musicians, of course, have been a part of this story, bringing with them new sounds, instruments and ways of working. Sonny Kim is an extraordinary vocalist, improviser, composer and educator who migrated from South Korea to Australia in 2018. As a jazz musician, she's performed around the world. Her work is restless and exploratory, but remains grounded in improvisation and collaboration. For her new piece, Sunny has brought together a group of musicians from different cultural and musical backgrounds to share stories of migration, dislocation and motherhood. These powerful themes have allowed the musicians to navigate their differences and find a new unifying language. To mother is an act of radical optimism for the future. It is to be a revolutionary, to be brave. To be invested in the positive transformation of culture. To collaborate on creating a kinder future world. This piece, Mother Tongue Motherland, started um, back in 2021 in a very long lockdown. And uh, the Australian international borders were closed and tens of thousands of uh, people were stranded overseas and also millions of, of people, Australians, were um, uh, separated um, by, from their families overseas. And so I was one of them <laughs> and I had my family, uh, my father and, and, and mother and my brother um, uh, in Korea, South Korea. And uh, unfortunately, my father uh, became quite ill. And um, so through the lockdown, it was very difficult to be away and not together with my family. Mother. Omoni. Mom, I knew that there were some others in the creative community that had a similar experience and I wanted to have a chance to, for us to get together and talk about that and through words but also through music. Mom. Aidi. I think that all my work comes from a very personal place, but actually this was my first time that I invited others to, to think about a very particular you know, experience, a, a common experience. Mama. Mutsing. Mama, Mama, Ne. Sunny's invited each of us as musicians who have an experience of either moving away from our mothers ourselves or um, moving away from our motherland or in my case, my mother moving here from her motherland. Um, and those kinds of, yeah, those expanses and those, that sense of longing and belonging and distance and they're the resonant things. To mother is to Qiangua. Qiangua is the connection, care, attachment, and the longing. My mother raised me mostly by herself. I was everything to her. Now there's oceans and lands between us. 
but the Chenggua and this invisible cord have always held us close. When we talk about lands, like you know, when we think about the country we were born and we grew up, or we are connected with, um, we also it's almost a, you know merge into the same image with our, our mothers, and the complicated feeling about longing about wanted to be together and also the you know the struggle of the struggle of how to actually be together after being separated for so long I think it came out from everyone's story, like at the end. Um, it's switch, you know, almost they come into a discussion or a, a deep question to ourselves about the identity, you know, how we became who we are and how we actually practice art in the way that we practice. So it just became a statement of ourselves, like who we are. I was born in Iran and Iraq's war, but I'm not scared by it. I remember the red bombing alarm. I remember running down the stairs to the shelter. Mom was my light in that dark, scary room, putting her hands on my ears to protect me from the sound of explosion. All I remember is her warmth, her heartbeat. I feel we actually healed a lot of our anxieties that was caused by all these issues we might have had uh, from our childhood, from our relationship with our parents, grandparents, our countries, where we're coming from, and the generations before us, because some traumas are generational and they pass on <laughs> to us. And we don't even realize uh, unless we sit in a safe place and share it. And we kind of find interesting things that how similar we are, as much as we're different, but our traumas are very similar and they just come to us in different ways. She never sang me lullabies. But years later, when I was 27, I sang her this lullaby at an underground concert in Iran. The first lullaby that I was that I was اجرات بر ما خونی که من اصلا تا حالا ندیده بودم تو آواز بخونی و من اولین لالایی رو تو خوندی In this piece are the, the mother's voices are uh, the collaborator's mother's and my mother as well. Um, their voices, the recorded voices and talking in their mother tongues is actually a really important part. And the music sort of wraps around and embraces sort of around the text and the recorded voices uh, of, of them. And so, I, yeah, this, this, this is also a very unique piece for me uh, in terms of trying that out. In my family, my grandfather's words, it's immoral to bring children into the world, have always hung in the air. Immoral to bring children into this world? Yeah, he said that because he'd been, you know, through such a terrible time and he'd really lost a lot of trust in humanity. It's perhaps understandable after being persecuted 
hiding through a war that sought to eradicate him and his family due to religious beliefs only loosely held. Sunny um, asked us to each interview our mothers with a set of questions that she'd prepared. And it, even that in itself was this beautiful invitation to sit down and to, to ask those questions and to hear our mothers tell those stories, which probably we've heard before, but for them to feel like those stories are meaningful or matter to more than just me, but to this bigger project, I think um, was quite special. The voice contains so much more than what we think it does. The voice is an incredible um, relational tool that contains so much information um, in addition to what the text you know, is meaning and, and communicates. So all the feelings and, and all the sort of the bodies, the, uh, the bodies of the mothers, I feel like are in the, in the sound of the voices. They're in it, like their voice is going to be in the performance. Uh, so I kind of learned to have her with me for real and, uh, and understand how important she is in my music practice. Like, it's so good. As a, as a lead composer, I facilitated my collaborators to uh, each contribute so much creativity. Um, and so I would say we're all um, composers of the piece, but um, I, I've, maybe what I've, the main thing that I've done is composing how to relate to one another and how to listen. So I wanted to um, share that experience of uniting across our differences especially cultural differences and um, because I, kn I knew from my previous sort of intercultural music making practices that, um, that, that, that this was possible but of course there's always the question is it going to work this time? <laughs> In this ensemble, we're working with a very unusual instrumentation. So we've kind of had to find ways that we all are able to support each other um, and not just allowing those kind of like less commonly heard instruments to always act as the soloist, but also act as part of the ensemble. Even though these instruments weren't, um, they haven't come from the same tradition, they're not designed to be played together, there's a kind of uh, a commonality that's come through the sharing of the stories and the desire to kind of work our sounds together into that shared space. I play a musical instrument called a gu zheng. Gu zheng is a traditional Chinese musical instrument that has a very long history, 2,500 years of history. In China, it's always played traditionally, but my practice is about to uh, bring this instrument into, let's say, the freedom or in the contemporary world. I uh, introduced a lot of methods that I learned from Western musical instruments, like you know, bowing or use it in a percussive way. So give it a more uh, color into the sound, to give it a more, you know, a palette, sound palette. So um, yeah, that's the instrument and how I play it. I play clarinet and bass clarinet. And I've also, over the last few years, developed a, a practice of somehow extending or preparing those instruments, often with plastic tubing. 
connecting a, a piece of tube that I can kind of use to spin the sound around, which kind of gives the, the bass clarinet this bizarre quality where it's still the sound of the bass clarinet, but it takes on this different um, quality as the sound moves around the space. It's quite um, ethereal, I would say. Um, and just allows you to play it in a different way with the sort of um, the key work of the instrument removed. It sort of becomes more like a harmonic spectrum. The instruments I'm playing in this project are called Kamanche and Gaychak. I always wanted my instrument to be more than what it is, in terms of volume especially and in terms of being able to add layers to the depth of what I play. And the only way I could access that was through pedals. Since my instrument is very ancient, I felt like pedals and things which are more mechanical and more physical and you can see them and you can touch them worked better for me. So pedals are another instrument I'm using like my voice. Navigate our creative concept. One of the first thing is to find the balance in the collaboration. I think it really helps that every musician in this group are, you know, everyone is a very strong improviser. So when we hear a sound, we can respond in a way that it doesn't take away from that sound but you know adding on so i think i have the, those kind of respect within our heart when we're playing we really know how to leave space for each other sometimes the instrument doesn't matter it's all about the, in, the musicians so within four of us i think that is very very obvious that everyone has this balance in their musicianship and that's why it doesn't matter where the instrument is from how it sounds um, we just make it work my mother's strong will has carried me to travel far on my own journey sometimes i wonder if i had come too far too far away from my mother. I think um, it has been an incredibly emotional process to make the piece together. So um, the sounds that we make is not just notes or um, these sort of uh, idioms. They, um, and, and I feel like maybe what, the, what we present as an outcome, as a performance or recording, that's of course always a big part of music making. But in this case, um, the process of making has had so much impact on the relational making. And so, Together, I feel like we've shared so much and connected in ways that um, maybe previous, at least mine, previous experiences hadn't really allowed. And I'd like to think about other ways that I can bring an aspect of, of this process. Um, because uh, I feel like talking and sharing stories um, can do so much more than what we imagine. <laughs> it can make us stronger. It can make us more resilient. It can make us wiser. And we can become um, braver together to be our authentic selves and hold um, the memories in a way that, that empower us.